this video, I'm going to show you the things that will speed up the rate at which you elevate your vibration and your level of consciousness. I'm sure you've maybe heard Dr. Joe Dispenza talk about this. You've probably heard maybe other teachers talk about this, but your reality is a reflection of your vibration, your energy. The energy that you embody is going to be a reflection of what you get. Literally reality and other people are responding to that energy. And when you think of your vibration, it's very simple. How you think, how you feel, how you act. These three things make up your personality. And as Joe Dispenza says, your personality creates your personal reality. Now, when it comes to raising your vibration, understand that that is the name of the game. That's what you uh, came here to do. I believe that we all came here to do that, whether we remember it or not. It's a way of elevating our level of consciousness. And when you think about it too, think of like even the scale of consciousness where you have lower vibrational emotions at the bottom, like shame, fear, guilt, anger. At the top emotions, we have more love, joy, and peace. Now we see the lens of reality. What we see and what we experience depends on the energy we are embodying. When we are embodying the energy of love, joy, and peace, we are in a higher frequency state where there is more synchronicity, where there is more, uh, you're in the right place at the right time. People are more open to your energy and you literally perceive of opportunities more when you are in that energy state. Now you might be asking yourself, well, okay, bro, well, that's what I want to do. I want to raise my vibe. I want to raise my vibe. And the key to this is more about letting go. That's the key to raising your vibration. It's letting go, letting go of attachment, letting go of the people. I was reading a, uh, what was this? I was, uh, listening to a podcast yesterday and it said that your income is a very easy way to determine whether your income's going up or down depends on your zip code. They can tell by your zip code, which is kind of a metaphor, but your zip code, where you are, who you surround yourself with has a huge impact on your own energy. The labels you have, for a long time I had the labels of, I have ADHD, there's something wrong with me, I had a painful past. Uh, these things kept me in lower vibrational energies. We have habits, we have beliefs, what we believe to be true about ourselves. These things are all on autopilot for many of us. We are attached to them, not even aware of it, and therefore they are tethering us to lower vibrational emotions. When you look at this too, one of the things that keeps people very much tuned, literally energetically tuned to these realities, think of the media. Think of the media. Think of watching the media. What kind of beliefs do you develop when you watch the media? The world is a scary place. It's fear. There's a lot of fear out in the world. There's a lot of chaos. And when we tune to it, we then begin to believe and create it within our own lives. In order to really raise and elevate your vibration, something I do recommend you doing is really taking an audit of where is your energy? Where is your focus? Because whatever you focus on, that's one of them, think, feel, and act. Whatever you focus on, you are going to eventually feel. You watch the news, you may feel fear, and then it may mean action-wise, think, feel, do. Action-wise, you may not take action on your passion. You may not ask that person out. Now, I'm not saying it's all because of the media. <laughs> I'm just saying that become aware of your energy and realize the more you let go, the more you will then let in. This was the name of the game for me. Back in uh, 2012, I felt on a scale of one to 10 with 10 feeling like love and like excitement and, and like really good. And one, and one feeling like not good at all, I felt predominantly at about a three out of 10. I would smoke a little bit, I would drink, and I'd maybe feel like a five or a six, but then I would wear off and I'd go back to about a three. And if I was feeling really bad, it'd be like a two or a one. Then I learned meditation. Meditation really is the ability to let go of your thoughts, the ability to observe them from a neutral place. One of those steps here is neutrality on the levels of consciousness, when you new, new, be neutral, being able to observe your thoughts, it, it, 
it allows you to let go of all the lower vibrational emotions. When I learned how to meditate back in 2012, it completely transformed my life because as I was observing my thoughts and bringing the awareness into my body, I started to feel high. Literally, no alcohol, no weed, nothing. And I would start to feel about a seven out of 10. It literally, I felt like it was too good to be true. I remember walking around my room in 2012 and I was like, I feel this way, I'm not doing anything. Shortly after meditating and going to a seven out of 10, I quit smoking, I quit drinking, I stopped taking Adderall, which is the prescription drug I was given for ADHD. Got rid of that and guess what? I started to feel seven out of 10. Of course, it would still fluctuate. Something bad might happen, I might feel like a four or five, but then I'd go back to my base point of seven. And then, what had happened is I'd had states of sometimes eight or nine. Now, I'm not saying I'm enlightened or anything. I'm just saying that our vibrational level of consciousness and how we feel, we have the ability to let go to then feel more seven, eight, nine, or 10. And then eventually, I've had experiences of doing things like plant medicine and stuff, which are more higher vibrational like uh, plants and substances. Not, no, you don't need to do this, by the way, but on some of the lessons I've got on those uh, when I was doing it like a year ago, in uh, Costa Rica was that there's actually like a 15 out of 10. It was like, hey bro, you know that, I was, the message I got was, you know that one to 10 scale that you always talk about? Well, here's a 15 out of 10. I was like, holy shit, there's more than this one out of 10 scale. And the other message I got was that in our lifetime on planet Earth, we will have the ability to feel a 15 out of 10. The thing was, is when I felt the 15 out of 10, it scared the crap out of me. Literally, I felt like I was gonna explode or something. I was not used to feeling that much love, joy, and peace, and it was like too much for me. And then I was like, oh, I can't wait till this is over, even though it was like blissful. It was the craziest thing. But the message was, don't be so, like sometimes I have a problem with patience. I don't, I want it, I wanna ascend as quick as possible. I wanna feel this higher states of motion, but I'm learning to like really enjoy the process of where I'm at. So when we're talking about raising vibration, understand that awareness helps you become aware of these beliefs. And some of these beliefs as well, you see, there's certain emotions. Now understand this, our thoughts generate the little times meaning. The meaning to what we give things in our past is what we feel. So in the past, for example, let me give you an example. A lot of this as well was developed when we were in a theta state of brainwave activity. A theta state is when we were from zero to eight years old, we're primarily in theta brainwave activity, which means we're just absorbing the belief of our parents, absorbing the belief of our environments. And what ends up happening is because we're in that state, that then forms our subconscious mind. Then what happens is we go out into the world and we become teenagers and older, and we still have these subconscious programmings of when we were kids. And that's why meditation, I recommend, is one of the most powerful ways to reprogram your subconscious mind. Because when you get into meditation, you can tap into theta. And when you're in theta, you can then begin to reprogram yourself. There are certain beliefs that are tied to certain emotions. For example, shame, there's a, a belief there I'm broken or something wrong with me. Guilt, it's my fault or it's someone else's fault. Fear, I can't. Anger, it's unfair. Something happened, you're fighting for freedom. These are the different meanings we give. And until we become aware of these and we really become aware of the beliefs, the thoughts, and you don't have to become aware of the exact situation where that came, but until we become aware of it and we allow ourselves to feel it and let it go, it remains trapped inside of our body and our subconscious mind. This is why I recommend breath work. I recently got certified in breath work, uh, somatic release breath work, because it, it was, it's just been so transformative. I do this breath work where I'm breathing a certain pattern. It brings up within our soma, which is our body, brings up these energies that haven't been processed. And as we feel it, we allow it to release from our body and then we become emotionally free. It's about letting go of the past, letting go of that emotion, becoming emotionally free. You feel like a completely new person. Now, something I am doing, by the way, starting October 1st to the 21st, is I'm doing a 21 day raise your vibration challenge and in that, we're gonna be doing the breath work. We're gonna be doing breath work. We're gonna be going through processes, of really a step-by-step -step process of transforming and raising our vibration permanently. If you wanna join that, you can go to raise the www.raiseyourvibrationchallenge.com or click the link in the description box below. That starts October 1st to the 21st. And in general, when we're talking about all of this, realize you don't have to attain and try to become a higher vibrational person. It's more just about letting go and your vibration naturally raises. Think of that of a bob on the ocean. 
A bob in the ocean. If you push down the bob on the ocean underneath the water and you let go, it naturally comes back up. You don't have to push it down and hold it there forever. The more you release resistance, the higher your energy goes. So what I had to learn how to do is I had to become aware of the attachments that I had. I had to become also, I wasn't letting go of the pain of my past. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful ways of letting go. I had to forgive my ex-stepmom from my child for like, you know, from 715, no power. I like wasn't allowed to have freedom, had to earn going to school activities, had to like sneak food in order to get enough to eat. I also had like some resentment towards my dad for allowing it to happen. And there was this energy inside of myself where I was like, why didn't I have a childhood? And the funny thing was, is I had a belief about women, that women try to control me. Guess who I always had in my life from that point forward until I, until I forgave my ex-stepmom, a woman who was trying to control me, either an ex-girlfriend who was jealous or something, or a manager who was very similar to my ex-stepmom. I had to forgive. Forgiveness is, is realizing that people are always doing the best they can from the level of consciousness that they're at. Some people are at a limited level of consciousness. Doesn't mean we have to judge them. See, they're still low vibe. Because sometimes that also, this whole like, where are you on the scale? You're down here, I'm up here. I'm way higher vibrational than you. That's when we develop a spiritual ego. <laughs> it's about understanding and accepting and clearing the energy, but not comparing to others. Uh, at the same time, people are doing the best they can from the level of consciousness that they're at. My ex-stepmom, somebody that felt, I would imagine, a lot of shame, a lot of fear, a lot of anger. She had a lot of anger. So she would control other people from that level of consciousness and manipulate other people from that level of consciousness. Doesn't make it right, but it does help me understand more. It helps me to forgive her. Because think about it. When you have an energy field around your body, and you have this belief, people try to control me. When you go out into the world, you're gonna attract people that reflect that back to you, that they're gonna to try to control you. If you have a belief or something that says, uh, think life isn't fair, or I'm broken, or something wrong with me. For a long time, I blocked attracting love into my life because I literally believed there's something wrong with me. I'm broken. Why would anyone stay around me and stay in a relationship with me? I thought I was broken, and I would project that energy out, and they would feel it, like, well, there's something wrong with him. I, don't want, I can't stick it with him. And until I, I looked and I felt that shame and released it and let it go, it remained in my energy field. And I would literally block love, I'd block new opportunities. So the thing is about becoming aware of these and when you forgive, you let go of that energy within your own energy field. And as it leaves, you then have a clear energy field. And when you have a clear energy field, I promise you, you will have more magnetic energy. People want to be around you more. You will be more magnetic. You will be more attractive. You will allow new opportunities and, and synchronicities into your life. Because literally, it is a matter of understanding that you get in life a reflection of the energy you are embodying. And if you want to go through a step-by-step -step process of elevating your vibration without falling back into old patterns, then I recommend you join the upcoming Raise Your Vibration Challenge. And uh, other than that, there is a video right here on the Raise Your Dominant Vibration Permanently Meditation, one of my most powerful meditations. Listen to this meditation for 21 days and watch how your life changes. This meditation will change your dominant vibration permanently. Your vibration is a combination of how you think 